We've all been drawing unicorns wrong. Park. So if you remember the end of my last vlog, I ran in the ocean and swam to heaven. Well, as it turns out, heaven is just a Popeyes. So after I finish eating, I'm gonna go back to Earth because that's where my vlogging camera is. Thanks, St. Peter. All right, so let's talk about unicorn anatomy. Now, I've low-key liked unicorns my whole life, from Magic Treehouse to Harry Potter to Chronicles of Narnia. My family is Scottish on both sides, and a unicorn is the heraldic symbol of Scotland. I've got Harmony Kendall's unicorn poster from Buffy the Vampire Slayer right there on the other side of my room. I've written unicorn stories. Sometimes I'd walk around college and go to Waffle House with this unicorn mask. I secretly liked Lisa Frank when I was a kid. My wand core on Pottermore is unicorn tail hair. And when I took the Patronus quiz, on Pottermore, my Patronus is a unicorn. So when you think of a unicorn, you usually picture a horse, typically a white horse, with a horn like this. But this is not what a unicorn looks like. Unicorns are not just horses with horns. Unicorns have the tails of lions, the bodies of deer, the beard of a goat, the cloven hooves of a goat, sometimes the ears of donkeys, and only the head of a horse. This is an anatomically correct unicorn. Like, look at the last unicorn, and look at the poster on my wall, and ancient coats of arms, and famous tapestries from the hunt of the unicorn that you see in everything from Harry Potter to the Secret Garden to Family Guy. All of those things get unicorns right. And if you're not imagining, or if, if, if you're not drawing unicorns like this, then you're wrong. I'm kidding. Like, you can draw a unicorn however the you want. Like, that's how art works. That's basic communication theory. People change and reinterpret symbols and motifs all the time. And it's not helpful to just look at the original meaning of something as if that's sacred and untouchable. But still, it's interesting to see what unicorns looked like for hundreds of years before modern pop culture took them and made them into just sparkly horses with horns. The ancient Greeks believed unicorns were wild beasts from India, more like donkeys or goats than like horses. And in medieval times, people thought unicorns were fierce, dangerous animals, therefore the symbol of Scotland, that could only be tamed by pure young maidens, which is of course reflective of ancient patriarchal attempts to control female sexuality by portraying women who weren't virgins as impure. Yeah, I went there. But the association between young maidens and unicorns turned into a metaphor for Christ and the Virgin Mary, which I think popularized the unicorn motif more than anything else. And the connection between young maidens and unicorns continues to this day when we associate unicorns with grace, beauty, femininity, and then it's evolved into a pride symbol, into a symbol of rarity and being free-spirited into a punk rock symbol. It's an atheist metaphor for the fallacy of non-falsifiability. It's a reclaimed feminist symbol. It's all kinds of things, but in that broadening of what a unicorn is, the unicorn's appearance changed from its more wild, goat-like appearance to its more graceful, horse-like appearance. And that concludes my lesson on unicorn anatomy. Next week, I'll be talking about unicron anatomy. <laughs> Just kidding. Next week, I'll be talking about the curious connection between Moana and Bionicle. Share this video with a My Little Pony fan so that they know the truth. The cloven hooves of a goaf. <laughs> the cloven hooves of a goaf. Please draw whatever you think a goaf is and tweet it at me. <laughs> the cloven hooves of a goaf? <laughs>